Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned Turkey against supporting ISIL terrorists in Syria. Russian media reported that Putin personally summoned the Turkish ambassador to Moscow to issue a verbal ultimatum to Ankara. He warned uh, uh, Umit Yardim that Russia will immediately sever diplomatic ties with Turkey if it does not change its foreign policy regarding Syria. Iraq and Yemen. According to leaked information obtained by the Moscow Times, Putin described Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan as a dictator. The paper quoted Putin as saying that Russia is prepared to turn Syria into a big Stalingrad for Turkey, its Saudi allies, and uh, their vicious little gang of Hitlers. The Russian president also said his country won't abandon Syria's legitimate administration and will cooperate with its allies to find a political solution to the ongoing crisis in the country. Please, Obama, please, Obama, listen to me. Enough, Obama. Stop Obama to help the good, the good, uh, the Muslim Brothers of Hood. Because the Muslim Brothers of Hood is a uh, traitor's group. The Muslim Brothers of Hood are killers. The Muslim Brothers of Hood are traitors. The Muslim Brothers of Hood are beggars. And we are so you to Obama, nobody believes a liar. And the question mark for Obama. Why did you, Obama, to help the good brothers of hood? Why? Are you forget what happened at 11 September? Is you forget? The American citizens don't forget. Believe Obama enough? We are Egyptian. So, you, Obama. We are don't need any help from Obama. So you don't interfere in affair in Egypt because in affair in Egypt belong to Egypt only. Belong to Egypt only. You understand the Congress America? You understand the House White? You understand and John Kerry and John McCain and the Ken Atterson and and uh, uh, Obama? We are don't interfere in uh, affair in America. I am sorry. I am sorry I don't speak English. Very good. But I am speaking English 50-50. And we are so to the citizens of America. We are Egyptian. We are Egyptian. We love uh, to uh, citizens uh, uh, American. But you are don't love Barack Obama. Shut up. Stop. We are don't need any help from Obama. On the finished speaking, CCS, CCS, more see no, more see no. Intelligence officials in Pakistan say a local commander from the terrorist network Islamic State has admitted receiving funds transferred via the U.S. He made the confession while being interrogated. Artis Ganeshchikan has the story. The Pakistani police arrested an ISIS commander, Yusuf al Salafi, and sources told Pakistan's Express Tribune that the commander confessed to receiving funds routed through the United States to recruit young people to fight in Syria. Al Salafi reportedly said he received around $600 for every recruit he sent to Syria and that he was working with the support of an imam. The paper quotes one source saying, the U.S. has been condemning the Islamic State activities, but unfortunately has not been able to stop the funding of these organizations, which is being routed through the U.S. This report raises so many questions. First of all, is al Salafi telling the truth? If he is, does this make U.S. banks complicit in funding terrorists? And another one, were U.S. authorities aware of this? It's no secret that he just... A little over a year ago, fighting ISIS was not a priority for the U.S. Washington was focused on trying to remove Bashar Assad from power. We now hear that President Obama will ask Congress for $5.3 billion to equip and train Iraqi soldiers and, quote-unquote, moderate Syrian rebels to fight the Islamic State militants. Over the past few years, Washington has been much criticized for not having a good idea about who exactly is doing the fighting on the side of the opposition in Syria. And many are now concerned that some part of this new package of funding and weapons could end up in the hands of ISIS.
begged already, the meeting in the White House over two years ago, everyone in the national security team recommended uh, arming ISIS. On top of that, I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but that's Paul, not true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's not true. The, uh, Whether, I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. And here's the thing. We've been funding people who are allied with ISIS. ISIS is stronger because we've been funding Islamic rebels in Syria. It's a big mistake. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. that's been made today to you. The Israeli president um, has criticized what he called Qatar's funding of terrorism, alluding to sending money uh, for rockets and tunnel building. Now, it is between Qatar and Turkey that there is this effort to build some sort of initiative that will be um, good for both Israel and Hamas's side. What's your response to a comment like that from the Israeli president? Look, let me respond to this comment of Israel with one particular thing. One, who finances Israel? Two, Israel is a terror state. They are creating a wave of terror with what they're doing now. Qatar is standing by the persecuted and the victims by offering humanitarian aid. Qatar's cooperation with Turkey has always been to be on the side of the persecuted and to support them through humanitarian aid. This is what's being done. To cast a different role to Qatar or to cast a different role to Turkey, first of all, shows how bad the intention of those casting those roles. Right now, we are a member state of NATO and we are a country which acts within the framework, together with our partners in NATO. We have an international identity, a character. We never got involved with terror. We have always fought against terror. This uh, ongoing operation led by Saudi Arabia, these operations, in our opinion, are important for the future of Yemen and we are providing our political support to them. We will continue to do so. And in later stages, there might also be some logistical considerations. And if there is a role for us to play, then we might be in a position to do so. It is uh, as if it's evolving into a Shia and Sunni um, matter. That's the kind of uh, period we are going through. Of course, that's not de desirable at all. We wished this never happened, actually. And uh, as soon as possible, both uh, the Iranian side and uh, other terrorist organizations that are giving them support need to withdraw. And uh, Yemen should be left to its own devices, should be governed on its own will. Terör karşı ortak mücadeleyi bir defa tereddütsüz sürdürmek durumundayız. Because we must work collectively to fight against terrorism without any hesitation. Ve Türkiye bu hususta kararlıdır. And Turkey is determined in this respect. Ve bu terör örgütünün Suriye'de Daesh ile savaş kisvesi altında meşruiyet kazanma çabalarına fırsat verilmemelidir. And this terrorist organization should not be given the chance to achieve some sort of cloak of legitimacy for themselves under the guise of fighting against Daesh in Syria. Açık net konuşuyorum. I'm very open and clear in what I say. PYD'de PKK gibi bir terör örgütüdür ve beraber çalışmaktadırlar. PYD is a terrorist organization like the PKK and they work together. 
Bu noktada iyi terörist, kötü terörist olamaz. And at this point we cannot speak of a good terrorist versus a bad terrorist. Daesh'te terör örgütüdür. PYD, PKK'da terör örgütüdür. Thank you. Geldim. Halep'te Esad'ın e, askerlerinin halkı zulmettiği söyleniyor. Türkiye'de öyle diyor. Öyle mi? Zulmeden kim? Türkiye bir ulu Cihş Esad bizlim kum entu bi hit beykum. Hadis sah? Galat. Galat. Cihş Suriye esafni. Galat. El muhallibin talabuni Cihş Suriye esafni. Suriye ordusu beni kurtardı. Esafni ustanuni hat. Bu ammanuni misraki. Allah'ım hayy cihş. Allah'ım hayy cihş. Allah'ım hayy cihş. Yaşatsın şeyi. Cihş Suriye. Suriye. Suriye askeri beni kurtardı. Ulan Erdoğan. Beni öldürüyordu Suriye. Afvan. Erdoğan isim tek. Kendi iyice a Suriye. Nihne hek amillu. نحب ولا أردوغان السوائنا لا لا لا تعب أو سناب أو تنا أردوغان ديو إكي يل أنجا بريه جيلر ديو بيز دونا ديو سارلر دك أنو سمعك نردي شيم ده أردوغان نية بونو يابيو السوائنا لو نحن أمس كنا عنا كل نشرب معه هلا صار فوت مصرات من العوق فوت مصرات شان حكمه شان إيش شان شعب يعمل إيش حرام عليك حرام نحن إسلام نحن إسلام نحن إسلام ندح بعضنا çağrısı diye saldırıyor. Saldıranlar Müslüman mı? Tamam bir soru. Yani bir ulu hal bir bir kütülü bir harbu hınak. Cihşil harb isimmum. Hani bir ulu nehne Müslümin. Cihad, fethu cihad. Ancak hedi ol Müslümin. Hedi cihak. Kafara hınak. Hedi men İslam. Hedi men İslam. Hedi men İslam. Özgürlükleri, sıkıntıları var mıydı? Özgürlük sıkıntıları var mıydı? Ken bi halep min avval murihin intu kintu. Ken eyi müşkile fi hürriyetkum afil hayal. ممتازة ممتازة في أمان الساعة الصبح الصبح ما حدا يستعمل طاول لا عايشين بأمان عايشين بأمان لدرجة الحمد لله شوفوا العالم شو عم بيصير بسوريا انخربت تعمر أرواحنا عايشة أولادنا في ذا الأرض الدم إذا لم يسل في الأرض ما في حياة وتأكدوا إنه نحن عايشين وهي اللحمة الوطنية اللي نحن فيها قيادة شعب يعني اللي بيقول في شيء اسمه جيش حر بقول له لا في إرهاب عنا في إرهاب في إرهاب بتأمر خارجي بتمويل خارجي بس نحن عايشين ورح نرجع ورح نرجع ورح نرجع. دام بزرع نزرع جزءاً. في من أصحابكم من عائلتكم ناس انقتلوا مع الإرهابيين. أنا ابني عمر سبعة وعشرين سنة من ستة وعشرين رمضان مأسور عند الإرهابيين. أسير. أسير. لا اليوم. The Democratic Union Party, also known as the PYD, has accused Ankara of arming militants in northern Syria to fight against them. Officials from the PYD, the dominant Kurdish party in northern Syria, also claim the Turkish government has indirect relations with Islamic groups in the war-torn country. The claim comes at a time when the friction between terrorist organizations like the Al-Nusra Front and Al-Qaeda have escalated into violent clashes with PYD militants in Syria. The clash has begun after pro-free Syrian army fighters accused the PYD of offering support to Bashar al-Assad's forces. There have also been allegations of massacres against Syrian Kurds, which Iraqi Kurdistan's regional president, Masoud Barzani, has vowed to do anything in his power to protect the people against. There currently is an investigation underway by Kurdish officials in northern Syria towards the massacres. But despite all this, Barzani has sought to avoid being drawn into the civil war in Syria and escalating any tension with Turkey as increasing cooperation to trade oil and goods have been made in the past years. If the claims are true, it is not the first time that the Turkish government has supported Islamic fighters as a part of a larger goal by the Turkish state. It is well known that in the past, Turkey supported Hezbollah fighting in northern Iraq against the Kurdish Workers' Party, also known as the PKK, as their bid for autonomy in Turkey turned into violence in 1984 and the PKK spread to Iraqi-Turkish borders. 
There are also allegations that Turkey is behind the rise of Nusrat al-Islam groups in Iraq and also radical Islamists in Syria who are strongly opposing free Syrian army forces. The international and political community believes the Turkish government's support of groups like the al-Nusra Front poses a potential risk of creating an Islamic independent state in the Middle East. Politicians believe if long-sighted plans by Turkey don't succeed, the Turkish government could be overwhelmed by the effects of the Islamic groups. Turkey is highly vested in the Syrian civil war because of the devastating economic, violent, and security threats the civil war poses for the country. Just recently, more than 50 people lost their lives in an attack on Renhanli, and the Turkish government has claimed that Bashar al-Assad's regime is behind the attacks. This is Armando Cordoba for Rudal English. Okay, let's uh, get more on this story now from Lebanese oil expert Jihad Hikayam, who joins us on the line. Welcome. Um, Islamic State is selling oil on the black market at a very cheap price, as we understand. How much is this affecting the fall in global prices? Uh, actually, it has a certain effect, but it's not the major effect why oil prices are falling because I've been warning since the beginning of the year on different uh, TV channels that the supply in the oil market exceeds by far uh, the demand, especially that we know that the BRIC countries are not growing in double digits, especially I'm talking here about China, and the other BRIC countries are facing uh, problems in terms of growth. And uh, not to talk uh, also about uh, the growth in Europe, which is really very, very, very weak, especially that we don't have any sign of inflation and we're talking about serious risks of deflation. So deflation is across the globe. Uh, we talked about it in the States, despite the massive quantitative easing that was ended uh, recently, we didn't get any inflation in the world. Added to that, we have uh, very weak growth across the globe, and that's why oil prices are decreasing, not just because of uh, the ISIS selling oil, because uh, we know that the capacity of ISIS is limited. We know that they're selling around $3 million per day. Okay, you say it's limited, $3 million per day, though presumably that, that goes a long way in helping Islamic State with their cause. Who is buying the oil from them? Uh, actually, what is uh, uh, very weird, we know that uh, uh, the enemy or the moral enemies of the ISIS are buying the oil. In particular, we know that uh, there are certain rumors that uh, uh, Syria and Turkey are buying this oil. And uh, uh, what is very weird, in case uh, we want to actually to destroy uh, the ISIS, Islamic State, so why to fund it with uh, uh, money? Because they need the money to, f to, to fund uh, the terrorists and to fund their militants and to stay alive. In case we are serious about destroying uh, uh, ISIS and we know how the, we can track easily the shipments uh, going from Iraq to uh, south of Turkey, why not to destroy these uh, shipments? And why to keep on funding uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the ISIS? So lots of questions are uh, raised. Do we really, we don't have any uh, choice, that's why we, we, we need the oil? Or actually we have other sources of oil. I can understand maybe Syria, they don't have uh, other source of oil for the current uh, uh, moment because actually they are in a severe war and they don't have other supplies, but uh, a source of supplies. But Turkey, for instance, they do have, uh, I guess, other source of supplies. So I, are they willing to buy the oil because it's cheap? because in order for uh, economic purposes to have uh, their cost lower or actually what's the reason behind it? Okay, thanks for joining us. We're speaking to Jihad Kikayam, Lebanese oil expert. Istanbul. <laughs> عاصمة الخلافة الإسلامية وينبغي أن تكون عاصمة لكل عمل إسلامي وهذا شأن تركيا تركيا الحديثة هذه التي تجمع بين الدين والدنيا وتجمع بين القديم والجديد وتجمع الأصيل والمعاصر وتجمع العربي والعجمي وتجمع الأمة في أفريقيا وفي آسيا وفي أوروبا وفي أمريكا وفي كل مكان هذا ما ينبغي أن تقوم عليه الأمة الرجل الذي غير تركيا هو رجل الطيب أردوغان ومن حقه أن يقود المسيرة ومن واجب الشعب التركي كل الشعب التركي أدعوه إلى أن يكون مع 
الرجل الطيب أردوغان هو الرجل القائل الذي يعرف ربه ويعرف نفسه ويعرف شعبه ويعرف أمته ويعرف العالم كله من حوله من واجب الأمة ومن واجب الشعب أن يكونوا مع هذا الرجل أن يعطوه صوتهم أن يقول له تقدم بنا إلى الأمام وأنا أرى أنه هو الذي سينجح إن شاء الله هو الذي سينجح لأن الله معه وجبريل وصالح المؤمنين والملائكة Now, Turkish police have fired tear gas at protesters in a town near the Syrian border, which was the scene of a deadly double car bombing a week ago. The unrest follows similar clashes in Istanbul and Ankara. Demonstrators are angry over Turkish support for the Syrian rebels, which they say is putting Turks in the firing line. World Affairs journalist and broadcaster Neil Clark says Ankara is aggravating the conflict. Mr. Erdogan has made a, a, a, colossal, a colossal blunder here because in August 2011 he took the line that he was going to play a leading role in trying to topple the Syrian government. He allowed rebels to be based in the country, his government gave arms to them and equipment and now it's sort of a blowback time. We've had some terrible bombings in Turkey this week and this will only continue until Turkey changes course in relation to Syria. It would be absolutely suicidal for President Assad to order attacks on Turkey knowing that very powerful countries in the West are just itching for any, any excuse to mil military attack the country, to bomb the country. So the last thing that they would be doing would be trying to bomb Turkey. So it's absolutely ab absurd. I don't know who was responsible for these bombings, but it's clear that what Erdogan, Erdogan has done is, is actually involved to Turkey in this war. He's, he's brought the war to Turkey. And understandably, Turkish citizens, not just those on the border with Syria, but throughout the country, are getting increasingly angry and demanding that he changes his course. Turkey's got to show restraint here because we haven't got any evidence as to who re responsible for these bombings. And I think Erdogan also has to actually seriously re reconsider his entire policies because all he's doing is increasing the tensions here by his backing of the rebels. He took a gamble in August 2011, Marina, that the Syrian government would fall very shortly and that there'd be a nice Islamist government in power in Damascus that would be very friendly to Turkey. It's backfired. It hasn't happened. And I think that, uh, only, you know, the, the position in Turkey is going to get worse and worse. I, I, I fear, I'm, I hope I'm wrong, but we're going to see more bombings, I'm afraid, because the war has been brought to Turkey. And, of course, the rebels themselves are fighting amongst themselves between the radical Islamists, the not-so-radical Islamists, and uh, it's all happening in Turkey now. Pamir maintains control on Rasul Mata al Falas in Suwaida, northeastern countryside, and continues to chase terrorists towards Tal Aswad. Russia underlines the need for international law and people's right to self determination to be respected, affirming that coordination must be present among states in combating terrorism. And the Iraqi army enters to Crete and continues its operations in Al Anbar and the Ayala provinces to clear them of terrorists. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. We start off with our local news as the Syrian Arab Army and a unit from it has taken control of Rasm Marta al Faras in Suwaida, northeastern suburbs, after eliminating a number of terrorists, destroying their equipment and defusing several explosive devices the terrorists had planted there. The Syrian Army has, meanwhile, continued to pursue terrorists in Tal al Asfar, killing and wounding many of them. A number of armed men have also been eliminated in the surroundings of Bir Umm al Daraj downtown Dara and the areas around Busra Sham and Jasim in Dara countryside. While in their resort to the east of Syria, the Syrian Arab army has also destroyed a tunnel belonging to Takfiri terrorist gangs in Asina and killed a number of gunmen in Sheikh Yassin. The Syrian Arab army has targeted terrorist gatherings in Al Dwaybe, Um Arish, Rajm al Qasr, Talbise and Um Sharshuh in Homs countryside. Eliminating a number of terrorists also in Homs countryside, the Syrian Arab army has tightened control over vast areas of the governorate's eastern countryside and Hakmi Hills, as well as over a number of villages including Jahar and Jazal, eliminating ISIL terrorists including Moroccan snipers. <laughs> In 
in international news, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that combating terrorism should take place on the basis of international law, a thing that should not be ignored by the United Nations Security Council. In a press conference with his Spanish counterpart, Jose Manuel Garcia, in Moscow, Lavrov said there is earnest need to coordinate measures among states in fighting terrorism and extremism. On the Ukrainian situation, the Russian minister reiterated his country's calls for getting all measures related to the Minsk agreement implemented. Chairman of the Turkish Homeland Party, Dugo Birçik, has said that the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has exported terrorism and armed men to Syria, crushing under his feet the manners of dealing with neighbors. al Wisal Channel has quoted Perncik, who recently visited Syria, as saying in a word he delivered during the School of Politics festivity at Bahichan Shahar University in Istanbul, that the countries of the region confronting the armed organizations trained by the United States, he pointed out that the latter is getting ready to send to Syria the armed men who will be trained in Turkey within the framework of the so-called program of training and equipping Syrian opposition. The Lebanese, the Lebanese army has thwarted terrorist attempts to attack one of its positions in Arsal in al Bekaa province. The army has sent reinforcement to its front positions opposite Arsal, prairies and eastern mountains, mountains chains where terrorist suspected moves have been monitored. The Lebanese army has meanwhile arrested terrorist Mohammed Hashim Awad in Malaboon prairies in al Bekaa in, on the charges of belonging to terrorist organizations and taking part in attacks against the Lebanese army as well as his support for the terrorist groups in al Qalamun. In Iraq, Iraqi army entered the streets of Tikrit, the center of Saladin governorate, after encircling it from different axes, as a clear progress is achieved in al Qadisiya neighborhood in the city. Iraqi armed forces liberated 1,400 square kilometers, including 42 villages east of Saladin governorate from ISIS terrorist group. Meanwhile, Iraqi army started to attack the positions of the terrorist groups in a real district southwest of Kirkuk in Saladin in order to clear the road of PG Kirkuk passing across Al Hawija district. In Al Ambar, the Iraqi army inflicted heavy casualties among ISIS terrorists as part of continuing operations to liberate Al Karma district. In Egypt, a worker was killed and 24 soldiers were injured in a terrorist attack that targeted a security camp in Al Mosaid neighborhood in Al Arish area of Sinai. A security source said that a suicide attacker drove his car into the camp of the Central Security Forces. The source added that the blast destroyed parts of the camp wall, killing a man and injuring the soldiers. Ambulances were seen rushing to the scene of the blast. In Libya, demonstrators burned the Qatari and Turkish flags along with the banner of the terrorist Muslim Brotherhood group. During a demonstration in the streets of Tobruk to denounce the support provided by these parties to the terrorists in Libya, the demonstrators called for supporting the Libyan army to fight terrorism and emphasized the importance of dialogue among Libyan components of society, excluding the main streams that caused the destruction and havoc in the country. The general commander of the Libyan army, General Khalifa Haftar, reconfirmed that Qatar and Libya continue to support continue to support terrorist groups by providing them with money and arms in reference to Qatar and Turkey. And they are exploiting illegal migrants to recruit them to fight against the Libyan army. After said that the ban on arming the Libyan army is a miscalculation committed by the countries that have interest in selling the arms to illegal parties so that they act against the interests of Libya and against the international peace. In occupied Palestinian territories, the Israeli occupation troops arrested 21 Palestinians, including children, during a storming in operation in several areas of the West Bank and in the villages of Taco, east of Bethlehem. The occupation authorities destroyed shops in Al Matar Street near the segregation wall in Qalandia and broke into Al Azana and Karaza villages. The occupation soldiers has also underwent training in Bab Azawiya and Ashala Street, confiscating shops in that area. The occupation troops have meanwhile stormed into Al Hashimiya and Barqin villages and opened fire on Palestinian youngsters who 
belted Israeli occupation forces with stones. With this, we come to the end of our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianline.sy. Now the latest in the world of economy and finance after the break with me. Uh, the Prime Minister will recall that for over 20 years, successive British governments have uh, quite eagerly supported the eventual aim of Turkey becoming a full member of the European Union. Uh, would he confirm that that remains the policy of the present government? Well, I can confirm to my honourable friend that the British government's policy hasn't changed, and he's absolutely right what he says about the importance of helping Turkey. Visiting Berlin, Turkey's Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan has urged Germany to give greater backing to his country's bid to join the EU. He stressed the role Ankara could play in conflict resolution, for instance, arguing that Turkish membership would benefit the bloc. The financial crisis, the global crisis, the Arab Spring and events in Syria and Egypt have shown that the European Union needs Turkey more than Turkey needs the EU, he told a think tank. We expect and hope that Germany will fully support us on the path to the European Union and in the accession process. We want Germany to do more, Erdogan added, saying Berlin's backing so far had not been adequate. Last week he won cautious support for the EU bid from France's François Hollande. Land, but the German leader, still recovering from her skiing accident, seemed unconvinced. Stressing that the negotiations are an open-ended process and that they must progress, Angela Merkel said, it's no secret and I haven't changed my opinion. I am skeptical about Turkey being a full member of the European Union. She also said an exchange would be held in judicial matters between Germany and Turkey, whose government's been hit by a corruption scandal. A few hundred members of Germany's Turkish minority of three million people protested at Erdogan's visit by Berlin's Brandenburg Gate. Many denounced alleged corruption. Erdogan's cast the scandal at home as a judicial coup meant to undermine him ahead of elections. What do you make of the, the tension between Russia and Turkey? Obviously, Russia hasn't done anything yet in terms of a direct response. What kind of moves do you think Putin is thinking about in uh, retaliation? Well, of course, they're on opposite sides in the Syrian dispute, really. Um, and, um, and I think Turkey's made that uh, very, very plain. Uh, I, I, you know, you don't know what the, what the real facts are, but it does seem that um, they, they could have warned um, the Russians to get off their airspace. They claim they did. The Russians say they didn't. Um, and so it was a hostile act. But, you know, they're, they're different. There are many different competing players in this game. I mean, there's Russia, Iran, um, and, uh, uh, and, and then on the other side, uh, you know, there, there's Turkey. Now, what Turkey wants out of it all is uh, very, very um, uh, disputed. Uh, uh, some people say it really wants Syria um, to disintegrate so that the Turks can um, um, uh, reoccupy that part of the world which they lost when the mm -hmm. Ottoman Empire collapsed. I mean, that's one view. So it, it, it's, it's complicated. Uh, and how does that wind up working out uh, economically, Lord Sadelsky? Because really, they're both, Turkey and Russia are very big trading partners with each other. I mean, Turkey imports 10% of all its goods from Russia. Uh, Russia sends 5% of its exports uh, to Turkey. So uh, who has more to lose uh, as the standoff may continue? Well, it may not continue. I think, I think this was an incident. It's a very serious incident. We don't quite know how Russia is going to retaliate. Um, but but the, the basic point, I think, um, to grasp is that Russia, in a way, has come in from the cold. I mean, no one is talking any longer about the sanctions imposed um, over, uh, over Ukraine and, and Crimea. Russia is uh, an essential um, partner in the quest for peace in Syria. Uh, I don't think the West like that uh, to be the case, but it is. And, and therefore, Russians themselves are, are, are starting to shrug off um, the, the, the fear of the sanctions and look forward to some uh, greater cooperation. These things change instantly. You know, for one, from one week to another, you get a, a twist in, in international relations, and, and, uh, and, the, and the cards fall in a different way. Do you have any doubt that the sanctions, at least for the ones imposed by Europe, will in fact be lifted? Uh, I, I, well, I, I'm not sure they'll be lifted, um, but I don't think, I think uh, they're not going to be increased. 
um, which was always a threat because the Russians haven't actually done um, what uh, the, the sanctioners wanted them to do. Um, and I think uh, they will gradually, they'll gradually fade away. I think, I don't know quite whether they'll be officially uh, scrapped, but certainly they're not, they're not the dominating factor any longer in the relationship between Russia and the United States and Europe. But you, you say they've come in from the cold, but critics of Russia say actually Russia is not a partner in fighting against ISIS and that the only attacks they've made are against the rebels and not ISIS, despite what Putin says. What is, is Putin an ally in the fight against ISIS at all, or does he have his own agenda and would it be dangerous for the West to sort of partner with him in this endeavor? Well, I think, I think he's got his own agenda. There is a power struggle going on, and he, uh, he is an ally, uh, Putin's an ally of Bashar Assad and the regime. But the point is Russia is absolutely indispensable, because what is, what is the basis for a political settlement um, in, in Syria? It's got to involve the existing regime. Um, it's very hard to say who else it's, it involves because um, the opposition is scattered. We don't know. There's no single, single entity that represents the, the moderate um, opposition. And what Putin said is simply what something the West has denied. Bashar Assad or the people around him are an indispensable part of any political settlement. And that seems to me the merest common sense. It just seems like uh, that's sort of the geopolitical landscape, but then economically at home for Putin, it seems to be a little bit of a different story. Uh, for example, the government today missed its bond sale target uh, for the first time in a month, implying that the geopolitical risks are seeping into Russia's ability to raise money at home. Is there some kind of divergence you can make sort of Putin geopolitically and then Putin at home? Well, I think that, that, that is certainly, um, I mean, there is still a lot of uncertainty, but, you know, you had another a news item about um, the P, you know, that the, basically people are paying the government to hold their money in Germany. You know, there's a big increase in uncertainty everywhere. Um, I think uh, the, the, the political risks in the situation um, are, are greater, and, and the markets are, are reacting to that. And I think they do understand that the um, international system is, is, is in a very unstable um, situation, state at the moment. Do you think leaders in the West will come around to Putin's view on Assad, that he has an indispensable role in stability in Syria? They're creeping up to it, gradually with encoded language, a transitional arrangement, fresh elections, he'll be there for a short time, um, and so on. Um, they're creeping up to it. I mean, it's, it's, only, it's only a meeting with reality, after all. All right, well... Uh, that regime controls a third of the country. You can't just write it out uh, of any political settlement. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has been welcomed in Ankara as she makes overtures of support for Turkey's EU ambitions. On a previous visit, Merkel spoke out against Turkey's membership, but she announced her backing for the opening of a new chapter in the slow-moving EU membership talks, though she still remains skeptical of full accession. The Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan has warned that the EU would lose Turkey if it doesn't receive membership by 2023. From stony looks to unusual looking stones. After tough political talks, Chancellor Merkel was treated to a visit to Cappadocia, famed for its caves and bizarre rock formations. The first stop in Merkel's Turkish tour on Sunday saw her visiting German troops stationed along the Syrian border. She said that their presence in Turkey would help create better understanding between the nations. However, a recent poll in a German newspaper showed 60% of Germans remain firmly against Turkey joining the EU. Newly elected British Prime Minister David Cameron has thrown his full weight behind Turkey's quest to gain EU membership. Speaking to business leaders during a visit to Ankara, Cameron expressed exasperation at the deep division among fellow EU members over welcoming Turkey into the fold. When I think about what Turkey has done to defend Europe as a NATO ally and what Turkey is doing today in Afghanistan alongside our European allies, it makes me angry that your progress towards EU membership can be frustrated in the way that it has been. My view is clear. I believe it's just wrong to say that Turkey can guard the camp but not be allowed to sit in the tent. 
So I will remain your strongest possible advocate for EU membership and for greater influence at the top table of European diplomacy. France, in particular, which initially opposed Britain's inclusion in the EU back in 1973, opposes Turkey's possible ascension, citing cultural differences and concerns over the bloc's political cohesion. But Cameron, whose Conservative Party seeks to emphasize the role of the EU as a free market rather than a political union, takes a different approach. He believes Turkey could help bring greater prosperity and political stability to the bloc due to its vast economic potential and influence in the Middle East and Asia. Lily Paquette, Reuters. Turkish citizens have taken a step closer to visa-free travel inside the EU. Officials from the European Commission and Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davitoglu told reporters in Brussels that both parties will sign an agreement on December the 16th. Davitoglu said, We are here today in a historic day for Turkish people, for EU, and in the process of Turkish-EU integration. Because after long efforts, by Turkish and European ministries, agencies. Today we agreed to start to launch visa liberalization dialogue and also to sign readmission agreement. In return, Ankara will be expected to sign a deal that will allow EU governments to send back illegal immigrants crossing into Europe from Turkey. Ankara had long been skeptical about such a deal, doubting whether the EU would ever ease travel restrictions. <laughs> If within a reasonable time the EU does not recognize visa exemption, Turkey may unilaterally suspend the readmission agreement. If no problems occur after at least three years, the doors of Europe will be open to the citizens of Turkey. Meanwhile, Russia has warned that Turkey's downing of its fighter jet on the border with Syria will have serious consequences for ties between Moscow and Ankara. The Russian jet was taking part in air operations against Daesh terrorists when it was brought down. President Vladimir Putin said that the move was a stab in the back delivered by terrorist accomplices. The Russian president stressed that the plane was downed before, that is, above Syrian territory, with an air-to-air -air missile fired by a Turkish plane, although it did not pose a threat to Turkey. He also said large amounts of oil from anti-Damascus militants in Syria go to Turkey. The Russian defense ministry has summoned Turkish defense attaché in Moscow, Meanwhile, Turkey's foreign ministry has also summoned Russia's charged affairs. Turkish Premier, Minister, Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu says that Ankara has the right to all kinds of measures against border violations. NATO ambassadors will hold a special session later on Tuesday to discuss the situation. Let's discuss this with Marcus Papadopoulos, who is a publisher and editor of Politics First. Welcome. Uh, let's look at what has happened. Uh, it seems like Turkey is in a rush to provoke uh, Russia or to stop Russia from the gains that are being made, unless there's other motives that Turkey might have for this. Of course, uh, that's based on your interpretation of who's at fault here. Well, first of all, what Turkey did today was an utterly reprehensible act. The world needs to know that that Russian fighter plane was either on a mission to bomb ISIS or was returning from a mission in which it bombed ISIS. And Turkey shot that plane down and it would appear that one of the Russian pilots is dead. The whereabouts of the other one is unknown of. Now, um, ISIS pose a malignant threat, not just to the Middle East, um, not just to North Africa, but to, to the whole of Europe. And Russia has been playing um, an absolute in crucial role in fighting ISIS in Syria. And here we have today Turkey, a NATO member, shooting down a Russian plane. It is completely intolerable. However, while it's completely intolerable, it's not at all unsurprising because Turkey has played a major role in supporting ISIS in Syria because the Turkish government wants to overthrow the Syrian government, it wants to overthrow President Assad and Turkey has been uh, training, has been financing, has been arming ISIS and other Islamist groups in Syria um, for the last few years and also when we talk about how ISIS is raising money for its um, despicable acts in the world, 
most of that money is coming from uh, from oil. Now, who is buying that oil? It's Turkey that's buying that oil from ISIS. But you won't hear about that in the West. You won't hear that from Western politicians and Western journalists. Because in the West, Turkey is portrayed as an angelic country, as, a, a, as almost like a saint, when it's anything but. It's an extremely dangerous country. So if you were Putin, how would you react? Well, I think, first of all, um, economic ties, trade ties between Russia and Turkey um, may well be in jeopardy. Um, Turkey relies on uh, Russian energy, uh, gas in particular, to a great extent. So certainly Russia could do something um, about that. And I think as well in terms of uh, bilateral relations between Moscow and Ankara, um, they, they can only deteriorate as a result of Turkey's actions today. But it's also important to say that what Turkey did today um, was, in effect, um, a NATO strike on a Russian aircraft. And based on uh, reports that uh, after the Paris attacks that have come out saying that, you know, this uh, war on terrorism and against the uh, Daesh uh, terrorists should be a war that NATO perhaps should get involved in. Do you think that Turkey being a NATO member taking the decision to down the Russian plane opens the possibility of that uh, door for NATO to get involved now? Oh, no. Um, NATO, or in particular key NATO members, have been involved in the war in Syria for the last few years. They've been backing Islamist terrorists against the Syrian government. How did, I, how did ISIS become the potent force that it is today? Because most of their recruits came from al-Nusra, the Free Syrian Army, the Islamic Front, who have been supporting those groups. Um, America, Britain and France. They've been arming them, they've been training them, they've been financing them. So, in, in, in short, the only foreign countries which are genuinely, which are truly fighting uh, ISIS and all other Islamist terrorists in Syria, they are principally Russia and Iran. Thank you for that. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor of Politics First.